Well, guess what? I get to kick things off this morning, and we are continuing our series on revival. And kids, let me see you get out that, uh, that little treasure that you were given when you walked in the doors. Brianna handed each of you a piece of gold. Okay, it's not real gold. It's fool's gold, but it looks pretty cool. And this is kind of just a visual aid to go along with our message today, because we're talking about going on a treasure hunt. And so we ordered uh, one pound, actually two pounds, of pyrite, and uh, we wanted to give each child a piece of fool's gold to represent treasure today. And I had the privilege yesterday of trying to break the larger pieces of pyrite <laughs> into smaller pieces of pyrite, because they came in with really big, large chunks. And so Travis learned a few things about pyrite yesterday that he didn't know. First thing I learned is it's very brittle. Um, I kind of took a chisel and a hammer to it, trying to carefully, um, meticulously break off some smaller pieces. And sometimes it would just pretty much crumble. I didn't realize that. Second thing Travis learned about pyrite, if you hit it the right way, it will shoot a spark directly back to your face. <laughs> And so, kids, I literally took my life in my hand, in my own hand yesterday, for you, okay, so you can each have some gold, some treasure today. We're going on a treasure hunt. We are on a continual hunt for treasures of the kingdom of God. This message today is going to stir a childlike wonder in all of us. Jesus said, you need to come to me as a child, in the faith of a little child. And if you've spent any time around children, you know they have faith for anything. They believe in the impossible. Nothing is impossible. And so it's going to stir that wonder in you. A thought of, I wonder if there's more here. I wonder if God, what he could really do with my five loaves and two fish. What is he capable of doing? Well, today, we want to encourage you from moving from wonder to truly believing. Nothing is impossible. There is always more. We're going to keep saying that throughout this message this morning. There is always more. Ephesians 3.20, he is able to do immeasurably more than anything you could ask, think, or imagine. Let me encourage you. God created your imagination. He gave you an imagination for a purpose. Because he wants you to run wild with your imagination. Thinking about the dreams that he's given you. The visions that he has revealed to your spirit. Nothing is off limits when it comes to him. He can do so much more with our five loaves and two fish than we ever could. He is a God of the miraculous. This has kind of been our banner verse for this revival series. It's on the screens. Habakkuk 3.2. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. And that is the cry of our hearts in this revival series. We've heard of your fame. Father, we've seen the miraculous things that you have done. Repeat them in our day. Do it again. Do it again. He is not done, folks. There is still so much more that he has to accomplish in you, through this church, through the church, in our cities, in our county. He's just getting started. Every day is a new day. Every day his mercies are new. Every day he has more. There is always more. Amen? He's not done with you. No matter how old you are, no matter how far you've strayed, he is never finished with the plans he has for you. I love it. There's a new song that's out right now, and the bridge to this song says, if I'm not dead, then you're not done. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. He has more. Revival means a restoration to life, consciousness, vigor, strength. What we've been proposing to you these last few weeks is revival is a lifestyle marked by greater things. Revival cannot be limited only to an event or a series of services, but revival must be pursued as an ongoing lifestyle marked by massive harvest. 
in miracles, signs, and wonders. Revival is a verb. What's a verb? It's an action. It's something that you do. We live revived. We can live as his church, as sons and daughters, as brothers and sisters of Christ, revived every day can be revival. It doesn't have to stop. Revival looks like a living and active church transforming the community around them. Your family, your neighborhoods, your workplace, your school. Revival can look like taking a meal to the homeless shelter. Revival can look like taking a meal to your neighbor, calling them on the phone, giving them an encouraging word, telling them how much Jesus loves them. Revival can look very differently than we sometimes limit it to. Revival looks like a heart continually longing for more. Every day we wake up, God, give me more. I want more of you. Fill me anew with your Holy Spirit. I want it all. Revival looks like a heart continually longing for more. When we go hunting for more of God and his heavenly treasures, he will give us more every single time. Do you believe that? He will give you more every time. He says, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking for the one who asks will receive. The one who seeks will find. The one who knocks, the door will be open to them. So let's go on a treasure hunt today. Amen? Amen. Let's go on a treasure hunt Amen. and look for the more that God has for every single one of you. No one's left out. Doesn't matter from Dominic all the way on up. God has more for you. Amen? Amen. Do you believe it? Are you with us? Yes. Amen. So last week, this message was for last Sunday, but God shook things up a little bit. And so last week when I was preparing this message, I was going to call it, there's always more, or there's more. And I was praying, I was in a time of prayer, writing this message out on a Thursday morning. And, it, and, and sometimes messages come real fast, and sometimes they come real slow. I like the fast. <laughs> but I was standing there, and I was walking back to my seat in my living room, and I looked down. And the Holy Spirit said, pick up that book. I'm like, okay. So I picked up the book, and it was my kid's devotional called How Great Is Our God. And I opened it to day 48. And it's, is it called Treasure Hunt? I think so. And it's all about treasure. So I'm going to invite our children's ministry leader, Brianna Rebound, to come. Kids, this is your gal. She's going to come, and she's going to lead you, and she's going to read this to all of us. So I want us... To become like children, because Jesus said the kingdom is made up of such as these, right? Faith like a child. And this devotion spoke so loudly and came, and it was like, oh, that's what the message is supposed to be called. So enjoy this as she reads this to you. She loves when we put her up on stage in front of all y'all. <laughs> Beg for understanding. Search for it as you would for silver. Hunt for it like hidden treasure. Then you will understand what it means to respect the Lord. Then you will begin to know God. Proverbs 2, 3-5. Have you ever heard of the California Gold Rush? It happened between 1848 and 1855 when rumors of gold had more than 300,000 miners rushing to the western United States. The earliest miners planned for gold. That means they would scoop up dirt, gravel, and water, often from a stream or riverbed, and shake it back and forth in a pan. The heavier gold would settle to the bottom where the miner could pick it out. A few did strike it rich, but others were fooled by a shiny, worthless mineral called pyrite, or fool's gold, which is what you kids have to get. Fool's gold looks like what you would think real gold should look like, shiny and golden. But real gold is actually kind of dull looking. Real gold is also pretty soft. If you hit it with a hammer, it will flatten out. If you hit fool's gold with a hammer, it'll give off sparks. Maybe you should have read this. <laughs> 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 
hunk of rock. That sounds a lot like the treasures people chase in the world. Worldly treasures sparkle and shine, and it's tempting to rush after them. But when you compare them to real treasure, they're stinky and worthless. What's the real treasure? Knowing God. He is the greatest treasure of all. God is the only thing worth rushing after. And he's so much easier to find than gold. Just open up your Bible and open your heart in prayer. The greatest treasure of all, God, is right there, just waiting to be found. Read the How Great part. Oh, okay, there's a, a fun little tidbit down here that says, The California Gold Rush is the most famous in America, but it wasn't the first. The Carolina Gold Rush began in 1799 when a 12-year-old boy discovered a 17-pound gold nugget. More than 30,000 people rushed to the area to begin searching for gold. Carolina then led the nation in gold production every year after that, until 1848. All because of a 12 year old. Woo! I like that! Thank you, Rihanna. Uh, kids, this treasure is for you. The treasure we're talking about today is for you. If a 12 year old can find a gold nugget, I know that my father wants to be found by you. If you're eight, if you're six, if you're two, is he two yet? No, oh my goodness, I'm jumping ahead. Don't grow too fast, buddy. He's so cute. We are so happy to have our kids in with us. And I, you know, he is a priceless treasure, our father. And we want our children from a young age all the way to 88, 98, 108 to never stop discovering Never stop pursuing the treasure all around us. There's more. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 2. She read this at the beginning of the devotional. Proverbs chapter 2, and it's going to be on the screen. It says, my children, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Do you hear that? My children, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Treasure what the Father says to you. Like the most priceless gold, like you're holding a 12 or 7 pounder. How big was that? 17 pound nugget. Okay, like what? Treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. So basically, all you have to do is ask, right? That says ask for understanding. Search for knowledge like silver and gold. Look for the Father. When you're going through a situation, He wants to give you the treasures of the kingdom to conquer that situation. He wants to give you the treasures of the kingdom to give you the wisdom to handle the people in your lives. He wants to give you the treasure of the kingdom to give you peace where you're trying to fix it and make you let go where you're trying to control. He is giving you treasures of the kingdom so that you can walk out this life in peace, in freedom, in love, in victory. No matter what we face, right now it may look bleak, it may look dark, but I'm telling you, you seek and you will find. You knock and the door will be open to you. And I think sometimes God gives us something and we don't treasure it. We receive a word or we receive something and we just put it away. That vision was important and he gave it to you as a treasure for a reason. You remember it, you recall it, you replay it. When he gives you a prophetic word, you repeat it over and over and over again. When he speaks to you through his word, through this beautiful text that he gave us as a guidebook, you go over it and you go over it, you treasure it. You hold on to it. If you have to, sleep with it under your pillow. It's worth it, right? When God reveals his love to you, man, the possibilities are endless. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And we usually say that part. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. But then if you jump to verse 13, it says, and you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. See, his plans to prosper you are you seeking him and you finding him. Your hope is him. Your treasure is him, right? I love that. 
this message. I want to be rich. <gasps> she says, <gasps> what do I mean by that? I want to be rich in the Father's love. I want to be rich in the knowledge of God. I want to be rich. And he says, I can. He says, I have access. Seek and you will find, Susan. Amen? Isn't that great? Woo. It's exciting to me. There's always more. When we think we've come to the end of our understanding, we're like, oh, we've got this all figured out. God's like, hee, 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 watch this. Right? How many of you experienced that? Even recently. We have to stay in a place like a child. Does a child ever stop asking questions? Oh, my word, no. Does a That's why we had a break this week. Travis and I went away for a couple days. I love you kids. But they don't stop. They don't stop learning. They're like sponges. Why do you think Jesus said, have faith like them? Because there is, the kingdom is vast. We are touching the tip of probably the, the, not even an iceberg, probably a universe, just the tip of the Father's road. And he says, come on, there's more. Let's go. You want to discover something new with me today? He's a good father, guys. And he's ready to open up the floodgates of heaven to you. All you have to do is ask, seek, and knock. And the door will fling wide open, right? Go to John chapter 5, verse 39 through 40. And I have it in the Passion Translation on the screen. This is Jesus talking. He says, you are busy analyzing the scriptures, frantically pouring over them in hopes of gaining eternal life. Everything you read points to me. Yet you still refuse to come to me as I can give you the life you are looking for. Eternal life. If you read the scriptures front to back, from Genesis to Revelation, the entire book is a revelation of Jesus Christ coming to earth to bring us new life, right? Amen. Front to back, that is what the scriptures, it points, and he's talking to religious people. He says, you're pouring over the scriptures. You want access to eternal life. I'm standing right in front of you. I'm standing right in front of you. I'm going to go to the cross for you. I'm going to pay the price for you. Watch this. I am going to redeem the ultimate treasure. You are his ultimate treasure. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross for you, for me, because we are his treasure. We are the father's sons and daughters. Amen? So the map to our treasure hunt is right here. Want to know what God's thinking? Look in the book. Want to understand his heart? Read the book. Read in multiple translations. There's nothing more fun for me right now than laying out the ESV, the NIV, the NLT. Sometimes I get really confused and I'll probably mess up the reading because I've read it in so many. But read the book. Read commentary. Go after the Greek and the Hebrew meaning of words. Understand. This isn't just for the pastor or the priest. This is for every believer. For you are a priest in the kingdom. Read the book. This is your map. This is your guide. We should treasure wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But if we only get access to these through the love of Jesus, right? We only get full understanding of the word if we know we are fully loved. Are you hearing me? Do you know you're fully loved this morning? And because you know that, because you are standing in that love, you will gain understanding and knowledge and wisdom. He will give you what you need to handle tomorrow. Because you are loved. If we lose the love of Jesus for us and through us, our treasure hunt will be lost. We, we will not discover if we don't stand in love. Do you know your love today? Do you know your love today? Jesus is the reason why we stand here today. He is the ultimate treasure. If we put anything above him in our lives, we will end up broken and hurt. But if we keep Jesus at the center of our focus, like Peter walking on the water, we will be able to move in the impossible. Guys, this is not something we're just saying because it sounds good and it's catchy. And we're trying to be hip to your jive. I just said that. <laughs> trying to get you laughing at it. I'll never say it again, I promise. <laughs> we're saying 
saying this because this is the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So when we receive Jesus, we receive access to the Father and the treasures of the kingdom. As daughters and sons, your inheritance is before you. Amen? Woo, that's a good step. And here's the other cool part. In verse, I think it's 1 John, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the Word. He's the living Word, right? That's so good. So when you're reading this, you're reading Him. When you're understanding His words, you're understanding His heart and who He is. It's mind-blowing. It's like finding treasure, and you're like, oh, look at that. There's a ruby. Oh, there's a garnet. There's, I can't think of any other diamonds or gems, but there they are. Like, it's an ongoing hunt for more of God. And when you see him, I love that smile, Jim. He's got their smile on for your ear. It's like that. It's like that. Whew. I want to take you to one more verse. Remind you that this word is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It never gets old. I remember as a kid reading the Bible and thinking, yeah, it's kind of boring. I don't get it. But I'm telling you kids, keep reading it. Right. Keep studying it. Keep trying to understand. Ask your parents for help. Ask your grandparents for help. Ask your aunts and uncles because this is the most priceless thing that you can gain understanding on. Right. No college education. Come on. This is it. So in John chapter 14, verse 15 through 17, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. We've been on a Holy Spirit kick lately. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, He is something else. He is something else. So in verse 15 through 17 in John 14, it says, If you love me, obey my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. So, who's your guide on this treasure hunt? Who's your, he will lead you into all truth. You don't know what the truth is today? Holy Spirit, help me. Take away the confusion. Give me your vision. You can trust the Holy Spirit. He is trustworthy. Jesus sent him. He's from the Father. He's a promise. And he came as an advocate to guide you, to direct you, and to bring you into breakthrough. You can trust the Holy Spirit to be your guide, to be your eyes, to be your voice, to step into situations and bring heaven like you never thought you could because you can't without him. So good. There's always more. The more we grow, we always need to do a pulse check. Are we keeping Jesus at the center? And are we listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? The moment we tune out his voice is the moment we become like a stagnant pond. You see, a stagnant pond has no inflow of fresh water. A stagnant pond is stinky. It smells like death. But when you have rivers of living water throwing
You think that was a coincidence? When the church prays, when the spirit moves. I'm supposed to stop now and give you the mic back. Okay. There's always more, guys. There's always more. So when Jesus wanted to illustrate the kingdom, how did he do it? What did Jesus use to illustrate the kingdom? The miracles. Stories, yes. Oh, he left. I was going to use Corey for something, but he walked out. It's all right. So, Corey and I uh, have a really good relationship, and we talk a lot about movies. And Corey is very much into um, any kind of Marvel, DC, uh, those kind of uh, themed movies. And some of them are very long, upwards of almost three hours. You watch The Last Avengers, uh, what was it? Uh, Endgame. Endgame. Almost a three hour long so movie. Long. It was so long. Why does it have to be so long? <laughs> but, but it was very long. How can a three hour movie hold your attention for three hours? Because it's telling a story. Story. We gave our leadership team at the beginning of this year a book called Building a Story Brand. And the entire premise of this book is your vision for your church or for your business, it needs to be inviting people into a story. What story are you telling? And Jesus taught in story form. He used parables to illustrate kingdom principles. And one of his very familiar parables was the, the parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl. And this is what he said in Matthew 13. It's on the screens. He's illustrating the kingdom. And he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field in his excitement or in his joy. He hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Jesus is that good. His kingdom is that valuable. That I could sell everything that I have. That I can surrender everything that I am for Him. And it's a happy trade-off. He's worth it. You give Him your five loaves and two fish. He gives you a whole chain of restaurants. Everything. For who he is, is worth it. It's a happy trade-off. When we see how magnificent Jesus is, we become excited to surrender all we are in order to live in the fullness of his kingdom. We become excited about surrendering our comfort. Excited about surrendering our lifestyles. Excited about surrendering our image. Everything for all of him. Because he is a priceless treasure. There is nothing. Can you imagine finding something so valuable? Chuck, you find something at an auction that's so valuable that in your excitement, you go sell your house, all your cars, Everything that you own <laughs> to go back, <laughs> not Kim, no. No, I'm going to lose it now. You sell everything that you own in order to go back and buy that one thing that you found. It's worth it. Come on. It's worth it. It doesn't make sense, but God rarely ever makes sense. And he, who he is and what he promises and his goodness and his love is so valuable that there should be nothing that we possess 
Nothing we are, nothing that we have, that we say, nope, you're not having that. Nope, I'm not giving up control of that. My comfort, my lifestyle, my security, everything that I am, my family. What gets me is when we have missionaries come in and God has called them to the mission field. But it's not just them. It's their entire family. And some of these families have agreed to go to places on this earth that is incredibly dangerous. But they say we are giving up everything that we have, everything that we hold on to in order to follow him. And I've never heard one missionary say, man, I regret doing that. Because he is worth it every time. Everything we are for everything he is. His kingdom. This is what the word says in Romans. What is his kingdom? His kingdom is not a matter of eating or drinking stuff. But it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Things you can't buy. Things you can't acquire with your wisdom, with your knowledge, with your experience. Things that are only found in His Holy Spirit. By pursuing Him. By seeking Him with all of your heart. It's worth it. He is worth it. Can I do something today though? In studying for this message, I've heard this passage of Scripture preached on many times in my life. But I have never, ever heard it interpreted this way. This is why we love the Passion Translation, because it's not just about the translation itself. It's about the commentary. It's about a different interpretation of some scriptures that I've read for years. And he says that really this parable is not talking about Jesus as the treasure. That if you read a few verses back, Jesus is explaining his parables to his disciples because they didn't really understand when he would illustrate the kingdom in parable form. Very often they were like, Jesus, what are you talking about? And so he's explaining his parables. And in the one parable he's explaining just a few verses before this, he says, the world is the field. And so that changes this entire Metaphor, Because if the world is the field, listen to this. The hidden treasure is you and me. Jesus is the man who sold all that he owned, leaving his exalted place of glory to come and pay for the sin of the whole world with his own blood just so he could have you, his treasure. Doesn't that change everything? You are his Priceless treasure. You, Katie Newsom, are his masterpiece created in him to do the good things that he had planned for you before you were a twinkle in your mommy's eye. <laughs> you are his treasure. And he found you and gave up all that he had. He stepped from glory to come into this world so that he could have you. When we find Jesus, now listen to this, or better yet, when he finds us, when he finds you, we partner together with him and we become hunters of a different treasure. A different treasure. Because if Jesus is searching for his creation, we become hunters of the treasure that is in our neighbors, that is in our families, that is in every single person you see with your eyes, yes. Jesus created and he loves, and there is a treasure inside of them, no matter how uncomfortable they make you feel, no matter how annoyed you get when you're around them, no matter how many times they hurt you in the past, there is a treasure in them, and it is our responsibility as sons and daughters to put the past behind us and to call out the treasure that's inside of them. Because that's what Jesus did. And we have no excuse to do anything different. If Jesus forgave the sin of the world, who are we to hold a man's sin against him? Preaching to myself. There are treasures waiting to be uncovered.
cleaned off and restored all over our county. These treasures are people. They are dearly loved sons of God. Dearly loved sons. Dearly loved daughters. They are his treasures that he gave up everything so that he could have. And that is how we need to begin to see every single person on this planet. Will you stand with me? Can you all put your hands out like this as a sign of surrender? I want to speak this over you, and I want our hearts to be united together in this. Church, this is revival. He is our treasure of great price. And we need to give up anything that we have that is standing in the way of us stepping into the fullness of who he is and what he's calling us to do. Everything. It needs to be our joy to give up everything for him. God, take us on a journey of getting to know you, growing in our identity and helping others discover the treasures of the kingdom waiting to be revealed inside of each one of them. There is a treasure in you. There is a treasure in your husband, in your wife, in your children, in your mom, in your dad, in your grandpa, in your grandma, in your aunt, in your uncle. Everybody. There is a treasure inside of your greatest enemy. Love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. Call out the destiny. See through the eyes of Jesus what he sees in them. Father, we surrender everything so that we can have all of you. There is always more. May we live in revival as every day we long for more of you Your word as our map, your spirit as our guide. Lead us into your truth, into your life everlasting. Holy Spirit, we need you more. We need you more. We want more. We want it all. Not out of greed, not for who we are, but for who you are, your kingdom and your glory. This is all about you. We are yours. Take us on the most incredible treasure hunt where daily you are giving us heavenly treasures. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, your voice, your leading Holy Spirit. Take all that we are and use us for your glory in your name. Amen. 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 Amen.